Welcome back to another episode of the NTD Podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy. And the holidays are right around the corner. God damn, I hate holiday shopping. I really do. I wish I was I wish I was disciplined enough to like go holiday shopping in like October and get my gifts out of the way. Cause literally like once Thanksgiving week approaches, the mall, TJ Maxx, Target, Best Buy, all them shops, man, it's just like it's a fucking it's a frenzy in there all the time, bro. And and even going to the mall, I hate going to the mall and just like I, I'm not a I'm not a mall linger. I'm not a mall linger at all. I like to get in and get out and and do it surgically. Like I need to get what the fuck I'm getting and be the fuck out. I hate I always without fail always 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 see somebody I know and 9.99 out of 10 times it's someone I don't care to see. So um yeah, it's always just like it, I, I'm always just hoping I'm lucky enough in those situations where we don't make contact like I can just I can be out. But uh, yeah, and it, and it happened again. I went to the I went to the mall on Monday to grab some stuff. Perfect time to go. My my job gave me that extra day off after that Sunday after Thanksgiving weekend, and I was like, you know what? I had originally I was gonna go to the mall on when was I gonna do the mall? I was gonna go to the mall on Saturday. No, no, I was gonna go to the mall on Wednesday before Thanksgiving, and then I had to do stuff for my mom to get ready for Thanksgiving Day. So I was like, "There's no fucking way I'm going Friday or Saturday or Sunday." And I was like, "You know what? I'm gonna go Monday at noon. No one's gonna be there. I mean, this is gonna this is gonna be people there. Don't get me wrong, but you know, work just kicked back up again after a long weekend. Twelve o'clock, it should be empty the mall, and it was for the most part. But there that was. Saw somebody from high school." All the way from fucking high school. I actually spotted them. It's funny. I spotted them from kind of deep in Macy's. And it sounded like him and his girl were arguing. And I was just like, oh, I I did another take. And I just made sure. I just left Macy's and came back a little bit later. So, um, yeah, and it was funny. It's it's the brother of of a friend that, uh, a good friend that I've had throughout the years. But I was was like, I was not in the mood to say hi. Um... But other than that, how how's everything going, my loyal listeners? Uh, thank you for tuning in. Some of the stuff I've been up to is one of them just fucking dreading holiday shopping and Secret Santa. I've been rewatching the shit out of um. I mean, I like Secret Santa. Don't get me wrong either, but like it's just that's just another gift to get. You know what I'm saying? Like, tú sabes, no hay cuarto para eso. Yeah, estoy harto de Navidad, pero imagínate. I've been rewatching the uh, the Sopranos recently, and that show, hey man, that's one of the very few shows in in my own catalog that it really stands the test of time. That show, and I first started why I talked about Sopranos, I think, like when when I had Connor on the show like a couple months ago. Great fucking show, yo! Like, obviously, like the plot, and it's not obviously the uh, it's not like the traditional like mob mob or gang type show or movie where it's just like it's like a lot of you know just violent like OD violence and gang shit and like shootings and whatnot it goes into like the actual everyday life of someone who spent the entire life uh in the Cosa Nostra you know and in the mafia and um cinematography great the music is fucking great the acting is great all the performances um that's just an all-around solid fucking show it's not like um, it's not like a Breaking Bad where also, but like Breaking Bad, it is one of like probably three to five shows that I have that really like stand the test of time, like generationally as like prom for prom greatest shows ever. But Breaking Bad was more of like it had all that, and then it had like that edge of your seat suspense. Soprano doesn't really have that edge of your seat edge of your seat suspense. But it's just kind of like it just drags you into the life of this family and like this is of the Sopranos and the, and the you know the the gang family in New Jersey and shit. And you just get so invested in it. It's really fucking good. And while I've been doing that, I've been playing a bunch of fucking uh, my Nintendo Switch. Just good because I haven't I've lost my uh, my lust for video games over the past year and a half. Should be dry. I'm at the point where it's just like you know what I'm saying. Uh, like. I can't play a game for more than a couple of weeks and then I get bored of it, whether it's like PS4 or Xbox. 
Um, really, the only thing that does it for me now are like re like for me, yo, just remaster some OG shit, and I'll be straight, and I'll fiend on that shit for mad long. So what I've been doing, they remastered um the last Pokemon I bought when I was in middle school, the one that came out for the DS, um Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, which was fun. I've copped that and been fiending on that. It's a little bit, it's been a little bit too easy, which sucks because they added like the XP share they they did from Pokemon Sword and Shield. Where it's like all your Pokemon get experience no matter who's battling. Um, which is boost your Pokemon OD and then like all the trainers are mad easy. Um, but I'm still having a lot of fun with it. And it's still harder than Sword and Shield. I really like Sword and Shield, but that that was the one thing that bugged me about that game. All the battles were dumb easy. Like everything was one shot, one shot, one shot. Um that's fun. I'm fucking again picking up Zelda. That's like the only game I really play over time on my Switch. Which is such a fantastic game. I'm coming to the end now. I beat three of the beasts. You know, for my nerds out there, y'all know, y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about when I say the the, the three beasts in Zelda. Who replaced Breath of the Wild, really? But um, yeah, I'm on the last beast. It's pretty tough, but I'm kind of just milking it, finding shrines as I go, having a lot of fun. Um, and um, uh, and yeah, listening to a lot of Kanye too recently since Don dropped. I never really got a, got a chance to talk about like Donda or CLB on the show, partly because uh, I always like to save these conversations for, um, they're not save them, but I like to have them more with with another party and just kind of go back and forth with music. And Michael hasn't been on the show in a minute, uh, but he's would be I, I love talking uh, talking music with Michael, but um. But yeah, but like I've been, I because I really enjoyed Donda, and I I was at the time obviously like, no, actually not obviously like honestly I didn't like CL, CLB. It's not that I dislike CLB, but it just it really just felt like flat in terms of replay value for me. Like after the first week, really only three songs got a lot of replay value for me. That being, I think, like I like TSU, and then I like the opening track. And the one with little baby's okay. I really only like one small hook he has in that um in that song. But um yeah, it just fell flat for me on on like that. And then uh, I mean obviously like way too sexy is a fun ass song. It's super fun when it comes on. It's fucking obnoxious as hell, but it's dope. It's dope to fucking be drunk too and just fucking dance or whatever. Um, but yeah, CLB just it fell flat. I really like Donda. I thought I still listen to a lot of Donna tracks to this day. The Deluxe came out and he dropped the track with Andre that was, you know, leaked by Drake and whatnot. And that was dope. That was a great track. And even the track that he had, um, I think it's called Never Abandon Your Family. I feel like that song would probably make me cry if I had kids, like specifically a daughter. Cause like it's, I, I that song is like, it, it jerks, you know, an emotion, an emotional chord when I listen to it. And I'm just like, it's there, but it's like, for me, emotionally, it's like, it's there, like, in terms of moving me to that next level, emotionally, where, like, I am I might shed a tear to listening to this song. But I, since I can't relate to, like, his family struggles on that level, it's just kind of, that's kind of where it stops. But that's a great song, too. And that other song, it's like, up, I think, Rise Up From The Ashes, that's a fire-ass song. Deluxe was great. But, yeah, that being said, with Donda, it was like, I really like Donda. I enjoyed it. I didn't think it was, um, I didn't think it was as good as, it reminded me of like, for lack of a better word, like a lower tier Pablo. The production was a lot similar and the types of features that they had was a lot similar. Um, but I thought Pablo was, I thought I like Pablo better, a lot better. I think Pablo might be my favorite Kanye album, to be honest. I know a lot of people might disagree with me. Especially the older heads. I don't care. I thought Pablo was the fucking, um, yeah, I thought Pablo, Pablo, I, and I've been listening to Pablo too. I've been going back to a lot of these albums. I, I definitely think Pablo's the best. To this day. And yeah, I think the only thing, the only reason why, like, I kind of double take when I say that, because literally, and it's I probably like one of my favorite songs on the track, but the Father Stretch My Hands song on Pablo with the with the <laughs> the bleach asshole line that almost kills, like it kills almost the vibe 
because obviously he's he's never he hasn't been like the lyricist he was since like graduation or even like in dark fantasy i, I would say up to graduation because that's what people like really was listening to I, obviously he's always been a crazy producer but like in terms of his lyrics that's when people thought he was in his prime but like that's probably the only thing that I, that stands out to me with Pablo but like yo he gave us like so much I feel like he elevated his sound um in a lot of ways and that and he gave us like he gave us the old shit like with real friends and with the song 30 hours I think I don't know one of those and 30 hours and the other one that was with uh, with Kendrick he had on that where he gave us that old school Kanye he gave us a fucking house track which was a dope ass track I wish Kanye would give us more like house music because I think he would kill it. Been listening to Dark Fantasy again. People say, like, and that shit just came out, too. I think I recently, I saw it, where it was, that was the most, the best or most influential album of the 2010s. And I don't even think that is, I think that album is overrated. And I mainly say that because I actually really, I really enjoy Soul Paul. I think they're all great. You know what it was? What makes me, what makes it overrated for me are the singles he dropped for it. I think All of the Lights, All of the Lights is like, that song has a lot of utility in the sense that it has, like, it's a good, it's a good pop song for the radio. And, like, that shit will get you amped up for maybe, like, a workout. It's probably good to play at, like, a sports, a sporting event, like, in an arena. And my cousin said this, too. He said, like, that's arena music. And, like, you ever heard it in an arena? And I haven't. But I think just as a, a single in general, I thought it was pretty pretty average. Same with Power. I thought Power was pretty average. I think those were the two, like, big singles that he dropped with that album. Oh, no, and then Monster. Monster was dope. Monster is actually fucking dope. But um, I also almost outplayed Monster for myself. So, like, I don't really have, I don't really go back to it on replay value. But when I listen to, like, that, that beat is fire. Nikki's verse on it is obviously, like, one of her best verses ever, if not her best verse er- ever. Um, but I really like so. My favorites are so appalled, devil in a new dress, and I like runaway. They say the few and all those songs on that on that album. I realized because I've been listening to it recently, are like at least five and a half six minutes long, and that's and which is dope that he can make basically a whole album like that. And like I'll listen to those songs front to back. Like that's that album is fire. But it's not the fucking best. Chris Rock had the nerve to say it's better than Thriller. And Thriller doesn't resonate with me on that level. But just as a statement, I thought that was egregious. Like, I thought that was egregious. Pipe down, bitch. Pipe down. <laughs> yeah, pipe, pipe down, Chris Rock. <laughs> um, no, but yeah. Uh, Yeezus. I've been listening to some of the songs on Yeezus again. Like, I've been listening to Mad. The only thing I haven't really gone back to is his first three albums, which I probably will eventually. But, um... Yeah, Matt Kanye, and speaking of Kanye, fucking, yo, shout out to Pete Davidson, I'm doing an early shout out, I'm doing an early shout out to Pete Davidson, who is a true testament to the fact that you can laugh a shorty's panties off, like, your boy is out here dating Kim K, probably Kanye's sick right now, bro, Kanye's dropping prayers on Instagram, Talking about his family, you know, y'all, I know y'all heard the deluxe tracks on, uh, on Donda, even just the regular songs on Donda, yo, like, <laughs> yo, he really, he's really, he's really wants God on his side, he needs it back, but yo, shout out Pete Davidson, because, man, he does it yet again, he's been with who, like, Ariana Grande, and I want to say Selena Gomez, but I, I could be wrong, but he's had bad girlfriends in his fucking, in, in, on his resume, yo, like, he's really, like, he's a true testament to, you can laugh a, a, a girl's panties off, yo, no, no, um, so, so, shout out to you, my guy. I'm gonna shake your hand, I wanna shake his hand. I wanna shake your hand, bro, I want your juju to rub off on me, bro, I need it, I need it, I need that shit, um, but no, yeah, it's fucking hilarious. And just but the, I mean, like, I'm just I'm I'm playing around. It's funny because right now, like, all her other sisters have boyfriends who look the, the exact same. Like, I know fucking Travis Barker's dating one of the Kardashians, and MGK is dating one of the fake Kardashians, and Megan Fox, I think, because she's been with them a lot. 
I'm probably I say Chloe or Chloe's the Chloe's the tall one, the OJ's daughter, <laughs> allegedly. Uh, fucking um, she probably got some some tall skinny white boy tatted up white boy as a boyfriend too. It's just like it's pro- it's probably so cute for the fucking media, and it's funny because I watched Kanye's Drink Champs interview, which was a fucking gem by the way. He had magic like I fucking loved it. He uh he I think when he said that he don't fuck with her publicist, I think that's what he's talking about. <laughs> Cause yo, that image is cute for the Instagrams and the Twitters and the TMZs and you know, she's rebooting, keeping up with the Kardashians, you know, that they all have like the same type boyfriend. You know, it's a great story. And I could see that being like one of those fucking Hollywood fucking setup uh setup relationships or whatever. But you know, we'll see. We'll see. Dio es grande y uh Dio I gotta prevail on the end, Kanye. So just if you want her back, we'll see what happens, fam. It's, it's gonna be for the best. On other news, fucking, we got another fucking variant for, for COVID, which is fucking wild. I literally just found out about this yesterday. And these names just get crazy and crazier. Like we had Delta, we had the Delta, the Delta, it wasn't the Delta variant. I got the COVID Delta. Hold on. And this one's called uh, Omnicron. Fucking the the Omnicron variant, bro. Like that shit sound like um those affordable laptops that like Dell pulls out, like the Dell Omnicron or Omicron. Uh, Omicron is called yeah, Omicron. Yeah, boy, yo, COVID's marketing team is wild. <laughs> they got they got a crazy marketing team over there in uh, in the COVID camp because you know what I'm saying. It's it's um we got another one, so. uh it literally sounds like Omicron. It sounds like a version of Pokemon that's about to come on. Like, yo, I got the Poke- Pokemon Omicron version or or the Pokemon Delta version. You know what I'm saying? They they both got their different legendary. I'm sorry if I'm losing all the non nerds out there, but to all my motherfuckers who played uh, who who played Pokemon in the past, y'all know what I'm saying. That sounds like the new Pokemon game that's gonna drop in like a year, like Poke Pokemon Omicron. Um. It's funny because I, t- I say this a lot on the show, yo. We literally start, I started this in a pandemic without knowing it was going to be like the first episode was just pure joy and excitement that we were starting something. We were starting a new platform and a new, you know, a new project. And, you know, a week later we got, we got, we got locked down. We was talking about it like it was nothing. And now here we are we're about almost, we are a year and a half in and we got different versions. They evolving. You know what I'm saying? La vacuna. So, um, the booster, the you know, we got COVID boosters. They might be mandatory now. Um, shit, I mean, the only the only booster I need is uh, as a booster in my checking account. Am I right? <laughs> um, but yeah. Hey, but I mean, hey, Joe Biden, he came out. He said it wasn't, it wasn't nothing serious. Man, who's the president? Byron! Yeah, Joe Byron said it's, it's scary, but it's not. We're not locking down yet. So, jo, you know, Joe Biden. Man, who's the president? Byron. He's out here and he's he's just trying to he's trying to calm us down a little bit, saying it's not that serious. Um, you know, I read somewhere, and by read somewhere, I was reading, but the article was too long, and I was at work, so I had to put it down. But um, Joe Biden's like I think his immigration and his his asylum, uh legislation or policy is like just as bad not if not worse than Trump's um sort of anti-immigration and in like refugee and in asylum uh thing fun fact of the day um man who's the president Byron that's right uh <laughs> Joe Byron son I mean that whole thing in those I remember those pictures came out like a few months ago where the that border patrol was like fucking wrangling like uh, I think Haitian immigrants or Haitian refugees that were seeking asylum. It was pretty like pretty fucked up photos and uh yeah, so on the Joe Biden's watch and you know it's funny how we, we <laughs> niggas had a whole party, yo. My parents had a whole we had a whole party and we got drunk to to the election results and they came a week late. <laughs> niggas I got calls like the Red Sox won like the Red Sox won the, the World Series in 04. Like it was fucking wild, bro. And do solid. La, casa, la cosa no cambia, pero vamos a ver. I mean. I'm gonna shake your hand. I wanna shake his hand. <laughs> yeah, yo. Um, this shit's wild. 
But uh, moving on to my new favorite segment, and by new favorite, it, it I just mean like it's my new segment that I've put in some effort into. Read yourself to death, guys. Read yourself to death this week on Read Yourself to Death. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna. I mean, I I've, I've actually been reading a, a a handful of books. Talking about a couple of books I've read, not crazy in terms of the the depth I'm about to get into, but I've been reading other shit than just like the history of DR and all that stuff. Like the I did the last couple episodes. I actually read The Alchemist, which was, which was a pretty dope book. And I read it, hey, I read it before Joe Rogan posted it on his Instagram, all right? I ain't, I ain't a super, super hype, be super, super clout man over here. Um, and I also read that book, uh, The Four Agreements, which I heard it was really good. And it was, it was a hype, like in terms of like, it's one of those, um, I guess like self-help spiritual books, it's, it, it is. And, um, and it just basically breaks down that the key to life is just living your life by these four principles being one, be impeccable with your word, which basically means, uh, you know, don't say shit you don't mean and and don't talk down on yourself or other people. Um, don't take things personally. Basically being, being impeccable, being impeccable, it's just like, don't be a chimoso, you know, like don't be, don't be hella chimoso and don't, um. Don't talk mad shit about people when you got to get your own life together. No, I'm playing. But that's basically the gist of it. That's one. Two is don't take things personally. Three is don't make assumptions. Four is always do your best. Um, And he and the author, I think, is Don Miguel, Don Miguel Ruiz. He um he, just, he breaks, obviously, those, those four principles further down in detail. Um, I thought it was solid. I thought it was a solid book. For me, it served as more of like a reminder of how to go about living your life because I feel like for the most part, that is how I try it. Like I never, I think I was just, I think my my sights were set too high on how on how profound that book was going to be for me. And I it wasn't. I thought it was solid. It was a good reminder of like stuff on, on like, you know, on a mind on the mindset to carry yourself, especially at the time that I read it. Um just because there was a lot of transition going on in my life and unsure, you know, uncertainty. You know, we're all uncertain at times, obviously. But like that's around the time that I that I read it and um I I it, I wasn't one of those books where I felt like, oh, it changed my life, it changed my perspective on how to approach everything. It was just like a solid reminder of how 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 to live my life, but I, I recommend it for those people, you know, soul searching, soul seeking, trying to be a better person, and you know, I don't know. I thought that, I thought it was pretty good. I also read The Alchemist, though, like I said, and that book was actually pretty dope. And I think that one stuck with me a lot harder, just like the journey of, basically the 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 gist of the story is the goal of life is the or, or the journey is the reward, basically, um, or the journey is the goal itself. And it was actually just like a dope ass story about a kid uh, seeking for treasure that he dreamed about um, in each, like that he had to dream about. And he, he goes through just the crazy adventures that it took him in. And it was like, it's, it was like a very biblical type of story. Uh, but yeah, I read that shit in like two days. It was really good. And I, I had a lot of people, I had a lot of people um, that were telling me to read that book. So I really enjoyed that one. And then um, what else did I read? It's funny, I, I reread the brief and wondrous life of Oscar Wow, which is like my favorite book of all time. I first read it when I was in New York, and I read it again. I read, I finished that shit in a week, and that book is way long because the Alchemist was kind of short. That uh, this other one was like three hundred pages, and that's a fucking phenomenal book. It takes you through the story. I I recommend re I recommend anybody to read that book, specifically and more importantly. All my Latino uh, family and friends who listen to the show, or whoever listens to the show, that's Latino, Latina, Latinx, fucking, it it just goes. It's about the life of a of a family, specifically revol like revolving around um, this boy, this man uh, called Oscar, and um, and it's just like it kind of it, it's it's his journey on like of what it's like growing up first generation 
uh, in the United States in the 80s. And it's just like, but it also, it tells the story of like his older sister and then his mom, how his mom grew up in DR. And, um, and I think those are the three like main stories that it revolved around. And it also revolved around like one of the sister's boyfriends too, like told the story. And you could really, I, I re- you could relate to the experiences of every single character in that, um, every single main character in that story, regardless, like men or wo- like men, woman, child, whatever. Like I, I related to like every single part in chapter of that book in terms of like all the stuff that, you know, the, the characters went through and just the, the, the tale itself. It's funny. Oscar is like this kid who was like, it's just about a kid who's been trying to get pussy his whole life. And he, he, I mean, the, the, I'm not spoiling it for you. I mean, I mean you know what? I'm, let me not spoil it for you. Uh, I'll let you know if he ends up getting pussy at the end of the book. But it's a fantastic fucking book, and I really, really recommend it. I told my family and, and some of my family members this. I actually bought this. I bought this for my sister. No, 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 I lied. I bought it for myself, but I told my sister to read it and to take it with her to Cali, and she and she didn't, and she left it here, so I said, fuck it. I took it, and I read, I read it again. Um, so that's another one. I've been reading um, uh, Things Fall Apart, which is another really dope story about like this tribe um, in Africa back in the day forget exactly when it takes place. I want to say late 1800s. And it just goes through like all the aspects of like, of the culture, um, and you know, the politics and the, the social culture and, and like gender roles and, and the spirituality and religion of, of, of like these tribes in Africa. And it's centered around like this fucking dope ass, like crazy strong, um, like, alpha male dude named Okonkwo and just like the shit that happened, like the shit he goes through in his life, whether it's, um, you know, I, you know, I won't spoil too much. Uh, but it's, that's a dope book. It, it, that one's a little bit of a tougher read because it really, it's really more the book. It tells a story and I'm not, I'm like three quarters of the way done and I know how it, not how it ends, but I know the part that I'm leading up to because, um, it basically the first three quarters of the book just like depicts life in that part of Africa and like the day to day life of these tribes and these chiefs and these shamans and, and how the village, you know, works on a day to day basis and, and what, and whatnot. Um, and then it leads up to the point where I, you know, white folks come and like basically colonize it. And I'm approaching that part and I haven't read in a while, but I want to finish it. Um, that's a dope book. Uh, that's actually a really good book too. Uh, so that's, that's, uh, this week's read yourself to death segment with your boy young Chico Lo. Um, God damn, yo, I've, I've been still trying to get my hands on a PS five. <laughs> Y'all like that transition. Um, yeah, but I've been trying to, uh, get my hands on a fucking PS five and it's just like, it's really like we're a year and a half in and I, we still can't, I, this is still like, very unattainable right now without having to spend like twelve hundred duck twelve hundred bo- oh my god <laughs> twelve hundred dollars um yeah shit's kind of booty but I also know like I said earlier in this episode like I one hundred percent will buy a PS five if I can get access to it like at retail price but like that shit will unless they just make some dope ass remasters like it'll more likely than not fucking just sit there and collect us uh, in my living room. But, um, damn, yo, yeah, it's wild. Like, I can't believe the hype beast culture really fucking, really fucking invaded the gaming industry and just the fucking, the gaming culture, which is fucking wild. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna start wrapping this up. I just wanted to keep this one short and sweet. I mean, there are all the ones by myself are more or less short and, short and sweet, but, um, yeah. Uh, good news of the week. I kind of got good news of the week, y'all. Um, it's more of like, kind of like up, not even uplifting, but it's just like, I guess like, like good, like a good for you story. Like good for you, bro. Nice job. This guy, a Massachusetts dude who, uh, he had open heart surgery and he was recovering from open heart surgery. Uh, a friend of his, his name, this guy's name is Alexander McLeish, McLeish, whatever the fuck. And, uh, in like a get well card he got from his friend, they gave him a, a couple scratch off tickets and the motherfucker won like a million dollars off that scratch off ticket. And, uh, 
So yeah, like good, good for you, bro. <laughs> Have at it, bro. Just you know, do what you want with me. Do do whatever makes you happy because this Omicron. Uh, variants probably about b- b- to take over. So just fucking, you know, have fun with that money while you still can. Cause, <laughs> um, but yeah, yo, Dio, Dio grande, tu sabes, Dio grande. Uh, yeah, man. So that's my good news of the week. It's like, it's like cool, I guess. Just like this guy, uh, you know. It, he, he seems like a nice guy. I'm looking at his picture right now. He looks like a, he looks like he like he used to be a larper, but like he hurt his shoulder really bad and it still clicks and it just doesn't move the same. So like he just kind of stopped. He more just kind of runs like behind the scene. But he looks like a cool dude. I'm gonna shake your hand. I wanna shake his hand. Yeah, maybe shaking his hand. Maybe I can get some of that juju off of him and maybe I can and get some of that money coming my way. Un un. You know, maybe the universe will throw some of that money my way. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but this just, you know, this has been another episode of the NTD Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. And if you made it this far, thank you for tuning in. Uh, and until next time, dirtbags, holla.